North Omaha History Podcast made possible by our patrons Jay Hanna, Wanda Lewis, Ian Schneider, Lori Schwartz, Christine Gerber, Jody Lavallo, Jim Collison, and Great Plains Black History Museum open Thursday through Saturday 1 to 5 at 2221 North 24th Street. Please go to patreon.com slash Omaha and become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. We'll give you a free gift. Welcome to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Each week, Adam takes you on a guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past. Before Gottlieb Stores, a few other entrepreneurs tried their hand at uh, brewing beer in North Omaha. Afterwards, though, Stores dominated. For more than 75 years, his family ran Omaha's beer industry. And even though the brewery closed in the 70s, it left a major mark on the city that still stands today. Take it from there, Adam. Imagine the, the 1850s in the town of Saratoga, Nebraska territory. We've talked about that before. It was just about six miles north of Omaha City. And Saratoga was founded by speculators, just like every other city on the river, and was really intended to become the next big thing. A guy named Richard Simeon was uh, 26 years old. He was an Englishman who came into the territories when they opened up. And he opened up the Saratoga Brewery right at 16th and Commercial Avenue. It was just a, the, the first brewery to supply the north end of the city with any sense of beer and alcohol. And people, I guess they were excited. They were excited enough that Simeon was able to keep going for a while and eventually sell his company to another guy named Ebenezer Dallow, uh, who went uh, and took the brewery a little bit further south. In 1872, Dallow ended up leaving the brewery business, and he opened up some theater in downtown Omaha. But he sold his brewery to a guy named Joseph Bauman. Bauman was a German, and he renamed the brewery the Columbia Brewery and moved it down, down to uh, 18th and Burdett Streets. Bauman named it the Columbia Brewery because Columbia, she was the symbol of American freedom at that point. If you can imagine... The woman from the Columbia Pictures logo, she's standing in a robe with her crown on her head and she's waving a torch in the air. That's Columbia. And she was the symbol of the States before Uncle Sam came along. Uh, she was also the model that they took the Statue of Liberty for. So Columbia Brewery, really harping on this patriot kind of perspective. In 1872, this guy, uh, Joseph Bauman, ended up, uh, he passed away early. Uh, and his wife inherited the brewery. Her name was Wilhelmina, and Wilhelmina Bauman hired a young German immigrant to uh, uh, be her brewmaster. His name was Gottlieb Storz, and Gottlieb Storz had come from Germany to make beer. Luckily, Wilhelmina Bauman hired the right guy. Storz ended up buying the brewery uh, by 1884. He took on a partner named J.D. Iller, and... Uh, they took the Columbia Brewery, they bought up, they built up new buildings, increased production, and two years later, Stortz bought out Ehler. Uh, in uh, the 1880s, he built a massive new production facility at 1807 North 16th Street, right by 18th, or I'm sorry, right by 16th and Charles Street. That plant became the basis of an empire that took over the entire city of Omaha. All the way from the 1880s into the 1920s before Prohibition, there were the big four Omaha breweries. They included Metz and Falstaff and Willow Springs and then the Stores Brewery. And they were in fierce competition. They were fighting to fill up the bars that were in downtown Omaha. They were fighting to fill up the bars that were in the suburbs like Florence and Saratoga and South Omaha and Benson. They were fighting to fill up the bars in western Nebraska. The Stores Brewery and, their, and the big four, they provided all of the beer for the Nebraska area and a little bit to Kansas and a little bit to South Dakota and a little bit to Iowa and a little bit to Colorado and a little bit to Wyoming. But Storz was the one who made it all the way through. His uh, Omaha Brewing Association company ended up buying and building a several what were called tied houses, T-I-E-D. The tied houses were houses that were tied to a brewery and they only sold that brewery's products. The Storz 
bars were spectacular places where people could go and celebrate the manliness of drinking beer together, the Germanness of drinking beer together. Stortz's plant sold 150,000 barrels annually, and he was the biggest operation in Omaha all the way towards Prohibition. But I'll tell you, in 1916, when the state really started bringing on Prohibition full-time, and in 1919, when the 18th Amendment came in, Stortz started suffering. Uh, he couldn't make beer anymore, and they really the government began to cut off his access to all of his suppliers for beer making and really come down on him with a hammer. So Stortz switched it up. He went to non-alcoholic beer, soda pop, and ice, and uh, he kept going, and he even got a little bit successful. His root beer was really popular, and his sarsaparilla was something else. He made it all the way to 1933 when the 18th Amendment was repealed and immediately went back to his regular production. Within two years, he was making 150,000 barrels a year and really rocking it. When he died in 1939, his son Adolf Stortz took over the company. Well, his son, Adolf's son, Robert Stortz, became the president of the company in the 1950s. Robert Stortz was a different kind of character. Uh, if, for only, if for many reasons, he was very eclectic and did some weird stuff. He did some cool stuff, too. There's lots of stories about his different uh, exploits throughout the city. But an important thing to know is, was that it was Robert Stortz who, in 1966, sold the Stortz Brewery to an investment firm from Iowa. Yeah, the whole beer industry was changing, and Stortz just didn't see how he could keep into business. He, stole, he sold the company to this Iowa investment firm who, in turn, sold some Minneapolis beer brewing conglomerate. Uh, but they ended up closing down the plant entirely in 1977. The plant sat empty for the next two de decades. I grew up watching it in the 80s and 90s and just thought it was a spectacular, huge building. I remember when they took down one of the first ice houses along 16th Street, and it was heartbreaking. But the massive brewery is still there, and oh, hope for it all. Unfortunately, the majority of the brewery was demolished by the early 2000s. Today, there's just a few remnants left on the site. There's the huge smokestack. There's the old, there's a new ice house that was built and a barrel storage facility that's still used for something else. But there's no sign of the Stortz Brewery. There's no sign of any of the different labels that they brewed. There was Stortz Porter, Stortz Old Saxon, Stortz Gold Crest Beer, Stortz Pale Ale, Stortz Wood Duck Beer, Stortz Pilsner Club, Stortz Gold Crest, Stortz Winter Bro, Stortz Export, Stortz Blue Ribbon, and Stortz Triumph Beer. They had different beer types flying out their ears. Unfortunately, it just didn't last. Today, there's no sign of Stortz left in Omaha. There was a short attempt to try to start a restaurant by the same name. It didn't work. There's no sign of the original uh, Columbia Brewery that was at 18th Street. There's just no sign of it. There's barely any sign of the Stortz Brewery itself. And honestly, people's memories are beginning to fade. There are some people online that... that collect the different uh, iconography of the brewery. They collect the cans and they collect the signs. There are other people who have stories, stories of their dads and grandfathers who worked along uh, throughout the brewery itself. There's lots of stories. Some of them I've collected on my blog at NorthOmahaHistory.com under uh, Stores Brewery, and I invite anybody to take a look on that. Share their memory with me. I would love to learn more from people who are affected by the brewery in any way. and. Uh, that is my history of North Omaha Stores Brewery. Thanks for listening to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Join us next week as Adam takes you on another guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past.